We just drove from California to Florida, 2,400 miles, free camping the whole way using only rest stops. Without replenishing our storage tanks. Here's how we did it. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. And long story short, we sold most of our possessions in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, guys, and we made it safely home to Piper. First off, we're gonna talk about how this is so important and why you have to be really good at camping at rest stops, especially if you RV nowadays. We're gonna talk about how to find the best rest stops. We're gonna talk about how to manage your utilities. We're gonna talk about safety and security, a really big deal. How to make sure you're legal because you cannot legally stay at all rest stops. And we're gonna share some tips. You know, we've stayed at a lot of rest stops in different states, so we're gonna share some of our favorite state rest stops with you. So they have the nicest rest stops of any state. And we've been to, I think, 46 no. states now. Indiana. I liked Indiana rest stops better because they come with fast food. <laughs> <laughs> if you're new to our channel, subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, please. It helps the video get more views. We had an absolute blast and we had never boondocked this long yeah. in our, since we started RVing two years ago. But it's really important now that you really hone on this skill. And here's why. There are so many new RVers out in the road these days that you have to be ready to stay at an RV park, but also ready to, to camp at a rest stop if, if need be. Yeah, just two, three years ago, you could start out on a trip and when you got tired, you could simply call local campgrounds along the way, do a Google search, and there'd be plenty of room for you. That's not the case anymore. And sometimes even when there is room, a park that would normally be like $15, $20 a night, they know that you're pretty desperate because you're calling them at 5 p.m. to stay that night. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're like $45. Their rates jump to 60 bucks for a night. It's right next to the highway and it's a, it's a crud hole. Exactly. So you know that they're kind of taking advantage of the situation. So rest stop camping is a fantastic alternative. We're going to share with you tips on how to find the best ones and also how to manage your utilities when you're staying there. For the first two years, we've only boondocked the most for two days. Yeah, we were and pretty I, wimpy. Yeah, and in this class, <laughs> see Mercedes and I really wanted to test ourselves we wanted to drive the whole 2400 miles and boondock all the way through without replenishing or dumping any of our tanks typically in the past we would stop boondock at a truck stop then the next night we would pay for full hookups so we could dump our tanks replenish our fresh water but we wanted to see how far we could go without replenishing our tanks or even getting new water sometimes you'll see them defined as rest stops sometimes they're just picnic areas and sometimes they're welcome centers and basically they're places where you are allowed to park overnight but the difference is that for example the rest stop will usually have some sort of utilities maybe they have bathrooms sometimes even vending machines and then the picnic areas those are more areas where you can park they might have a picnic table there's not going to be any utilities you're completely on your own and then the welcome center you'll usually find those crossing state lines yeah which those, are usually the best right they really are because i think states put a lot of money into their welcome centers for tourism to show you what the great sites are in that state kind of like their state chamber of commerce for people that are coming new into the state yeah and they tend to put more money into it they tend to be prettier bigger um, and easier to camp at all right so next let's talk about how you find a rest stop now typically you're not going to find these in the cities because I guess people just assume that you could stop and pull over anywhere in the city if you needed to. Well, not for an RVer. In fact, for an RVer, it's actually the opposite. It's easier for us to pull over in the middle of nowhere than it is to pull over in a city. It's true. Especially depending how long you are, right? So typically you'll find these rest areas a good at least 30, 40 miles outside of the major metropolitan areas. And one of the things that we really like about rest stop parking is that the areas are long enough for RVs. Now, in order to find the rest stop, we use an old archaic ancient form of um, <laughs> navigation of navigation called a map. <laughs> and um, I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you're probably of the generation that used these at one point. And now a lot of people are, you know, stuck to the phone. Can you and imagine what will happen if this world, if we lose all electronics yeah. and phones go down in this country? Yeah. Anyone under 30 or 40 years old <laughs> will be lost. They will have no idea hey. how to find someone across the street. Hey, I'll be fine. I know how to, I know how to Well, you these. are more intelligent than most oh, at your age. Thank you. You're I welcome. appreciate you're that. You're welcome. Say that again. I didn't hear it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but yeah, we used a map. And so I really 
like these old fashioned maps. And we also found that there were some pullovers and rest stops that weren't necessarily on the map, but we just we found for truckers. Extras. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's lots of free apps out there. Even though an app tells you that you can dump your tanks at that rest station, what we just realized along this trip is that half of the ones that said you could dump your tanks at these rest stops were closed. They were out of order. You, so you could technically dump when they're open. When they're open, but you know, so the apps you can't rely on. But you can also do a quick search within the state at Florida would be F dot and Colorado would be C dot, right? Yep. The Department of Transportation. And they'll give you more information. They'll tell you if you get fresh water, if they have a dumping station for black tanks. And we never dumped in this trip because we wanted to see if we could make the entire trip, 2,400 miles from California to Florida without dumping our tanks or replenishing our fresh water and we pulled it off. So right. You do have to have a lot of flexibility knowing that, okay, I'd like to dump here, but if I can't, I have this alternative. You really have to go with the flow, which was very out of my element for yeah. me. I did not like it, yeah. but I, it was a great experience. And some of these rest stops are absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, they're beautiful. The states really show off their state. Now, an important thing to know whether it's legal or not, if you are not allowed to stay overnight or if there's a limit to how many hours you can stay at the specific rest stop, it will be posted and it'll be clearly visible. So you don't have to worry about being legal unless you see a sign there. So now what do you do once you get to a rest stop? Biggest tip when you're entering a highway rest stop is go super, super slow. And why is that so important? Because all of a sudden there's gonna be a sign that says cars to the left, RVs and trucks to the right, or maybe it'll say RVs and trucks to the left and this to the right. Dump station to the right. You have no idea if you're supposed to go left or right and you have like a split second to do it. So make sure that you exit slowly. Yeah, because in a big rig, once you make a decision, there's no turning around, right guys? So if you miss where you're supposed to go, you're probably gonna have to get back out on the highway and not accomplish what you went there to accomplish. Yeah, and wait another 30 miles to the next rest stop. Exactly. And use your discretion. I mean, we saw a lot of people that had a car towing a little tiny thing and they were taking up a full, you know, truck lane, jerks, total yeah. jerks. But once you're there and you're parked safely, one of the biggest tips that we recommend, even if you don't have any sensors going off telling you that there's an issue with tires, no matter what, always go out and do a walk around around the vehicle. Yeah, and this is true anytime you pull over in your rig, always take a minute, just do a quick walk around your rig and check things out. You could find something that could go wrong. So Mercedes and I, make it a point to stop at every single rest stop even if we're just going three or four hours even if we don't feel tired even if we don't feel tired you know um we make it a point so typically we stop at rest stops for about 20 percent of a trip yeah right which seems like a lot but what it does for us is it does uh, quite a few things it gives you a mental rest mm -hmm. Um, it helps me with my sciatica, which I've got really bad lower back pain, yeah. so I can only travel so far. And, you know, it gives me a chance to walk around my rig and it gives me a chance to stretch out that sciatica, get back in, make a sandwich, have a banana, get some fruit, whatever. Well, and actually he's able to drive longer when he takes more breaks than if he just hits it hard. Cause that's how I used to do like road trips. I was like, let's just hit it a hard eight hours and then take a break. Right. But he can actually drive longer hours by taking more breaks every 45 minutes or so. Yeah, when I was a younger man, I could sprint, right? For, you know, an hour. Now I can only sprint for about 15 minutes. So it's <laughs> almost like jog. You yeah. know, don't be in a big hurry to get yes. there. Don't rush and take your time and make sure you're getting plenty of rest so that you do it safely. Uh, we're feeling great. Um, the sun just come up. All right. So now we're going to talk about managing our resources, our tanks, our propane and personal hygiene. Right. <laughs> well, let's have a candid conversation about the hygiene because we did not take an official shower in those five days, but we did do some things to stay fresh. Yeah. Remember, we were trying to conserve our tank space and make it the entire trip without dumping. So. Baby wipes are your friend, really you good. know, obviously washing your hands, disposable. They even have disposable antibacterial wipes that are made for the skin. So those were awesome. Another big tip was just changing your clothes every day and not sleeping in the same clothes. So Which that was made funny because I thought we kind of made a game out of this that we were going to make it without temperate tanks, without filling up water. And I thought without changing clothes, right? Because our slides were in, which blocked my drawers. We're four days into this thing and Mercedes looks at me and says, why don't you change your clothes? Yeah, you can, if you just stick your hand in there, you can kind of, <laughs> so, so Sage and I changed our clothes every day. John was a trooper. He was helping me save on the laundry. I grubbed it, which is something I've never done in my life. And I thought it was part of the deal that we were going to try to do this without changing. Now, I have no idea no, what Mercedes changes no. into every day. And that's the thing. Sage and I are changing clothes every day and he's not noticing. <laughs> <laughs> Typical guy.
the other thing that really helps a lot is, you know, some of these rest areas can be kind of gross outside when walking around. So I have two sets of shoes. One I'll use outside and for like doing my dumping my tanks, you know. Um, and then I have a set of shoes that are going to be in the truck and walking on the floor that Sage crawls on, right? Yep. So try to have two sets of shoes or maybe some pullovers over your shoes. Now let's talk about electricity because we did this trip in a class C that has an onboard generator right. and having an onboard generator or just a, a game changer. Well, you would never want to use a microwave on there just battery power. Right. I could just turn it on and pop a coffee in the Keurig and then get some coffee or tea. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. We love the onboard generators. The other thing that's nice about the class C that we have, and I think most class C's and class A's have this is a safety option. Yeah. Because you're going to be pulling off the same fuel that you drive your rig with, right? So. If your gas tank gets below a quarter of a tank, the generator will shut down. You don't want your generator running out of gas while you're sleeping because then you're stuck at the rest stop, right? Yeah. So it's super, super important to fill up with gas before you pull over for the night into a rest stop. Which by the way, you can totally do. A lot of truckers do that too. So don't feel bad running your generator. Another quick tip guys is if you need propane or fuel or dump your tanks, loves, Pilot, um, TNA, all those big truck truck stations um, will have all of that stuff, but they will charge you 10 bucks to dump. And there was a huge coal front from the Arctic dropping down all the way into Texas. So we went ahead just to be safe and we made sure we topped off our propane tanks as we knew that we were gonna be going into that cold weather halfway through. Well, and the other nice thing was that because we had the onboard generator, we were able to use a space heater overnight. Right. And that was fantastic. So was we were fantastic. able to manage both the propane and the electric situation and the generator and the gas. I think that was pretty cool. All right, so real quick, let's talk about the food. You know, cause for me, it's not dinner if it's cold. I really like a warm dinner. So- um, And Mercedes doesn't do burritos anymore, guys. No, if if you know, you know. Yeah, if you know, you know. So, <laughs> so my alternative right now is Hot Pockets. But every now and then we treat ourselves to fast food. Um, and for breakfast, one of the big tips are apples and bananas because they're super easy. Whatever meal you do eat, just make sure you paper plate it yep. so that you're not wasting water washing dishes. Another great point, dump your trash at every rest stop that you go to. Yep, they normally have trash cans. Don't, I mean, don't make a mess, people. It's, it's, we saw some places that were like littered yeah. and it was a bummer because it's so nice that we have the ability to stop there and borrow And then you get place. jerks that pull in and just leave the trash all over the road, all over the parking area. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Those yeah. are the jerks that screw it up for the rest of us. Yeah, we try not to rely too heavily on like truck stop food because some of that stuff's really unhealthy. Well, it's unhealthy and it's expensive, right? We made sure we had enough food for the whole five day trip so that we didn't have to buy anything at truck stops. Unless we wanted it. Unless we wanted it, right, like a candy bar or something. All right, so now we're gonna talk about something really important, which is picking the right rest stop. And so don't do what we did. We really suggest that as soon as it gets dark out, that's when you really wanna find a good place to park and stop for the night. Because if you wait till later and all of a sudden you're really tired, the last thing you wanna do is have to drive an extra 40 miles because it's so full. Right. These rest stops fill up fast. They fill up fast, so try to be in the rest stop after dusk. Yep. Um, the quicker you get there, the better. I can't drive like I used to be able to drive at night. I'm, I struggle with nighttime driving yeah. now, I'm embarrassed to say. Um, so it's best for me to drive, you know, as soon as we wake up, we hit the road and I'll drive until it gets dark and we, we'll pull over. The later it gets into the night, the more apt that there will be no spaces available because the truckers will be taking those spaces up. And speaking of the truckers, yes. one of the best tips that you can do is just do what truckers do because they have a magical superpower of like finding 15 places to park where yeah. I see like two and a half. Yeah, and we love our truckers, guys. These yeah. guys do an amazing job at parking in such a way to get everybody as much room as they possibly can, but not blocking the way out. And it, on a side note, we really do love our truckers. If you ate today, you can thank a trucker. If you stay at an RV park, you have utilities, you'll stay there longer, right, in the morning. But when you stay at a rest stop, you're like, oh, there's nothing to see here. I'm ready to go. So time you're, to go. you're more apt to like be hitting the road early and get more of that drive time in. 2,333 mile trip. And now we're at like, what, 1,800? Yeah, we just broke the 1,800 mark, so. so. So the, one of the very first things I do when I pull into a rest area after dusk is immediately I assess what it looks like. Does it look safe, yeah. right? Is there lighting? Does it feel um, safe? Does it feel right, right? And to trust your gut. If it doesn't look or feel safe, then probably just go on to the next stop. 
Um, and then I automatically do a, a walk around as I do every time I saw. But then I go ahead and make sure, double check, make sure all your doors are locked, including your baggage doors. Make sure everything's locked down. However you decide to protect your family in case of emergency, make sure that those instruments are in the right place and you can get to them quick if something goes wrong. Well, and not just that, but make sure you don't have valuables that look attractive. You actually do want a good amount of lighting. Mm -hmm. And and now another thing that I like is when there's a lot of people there, having the, the rest stop be more full gives me more a sense of security because if anything were to happen to me, they could hear me screaming. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things we love most about the Class C um, that we call the GG Mobile. It's the fact that if there's ever an emergency, it was wonderful just to jump in the driver's seat and drive away. Mm -hmm. With the fifth wheel, it is one of those things where we had an experience where we couldn't just drive away. Yeah. You know, I would have to get outside the RV, go to the truck, and then drive away. So Class A, Class C. The motorhomes. The motorhomes. I love the fact that you can just jump in the driver's seat and drive away. Assuming you're not on blocks, of course. Yes. <laughs> You know, for me, when I'm in a rest area, I will not open my slides, although yeah. some rest areas you can. Yeah. I won't because I want to be able to get out quick if I have to. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is I won't drop my landing gear or put it up on blocks. Mm -hmm. Okay, typically rest areas or rest stops, trucker stops, a pretty level. Yeah. So you don't need to drop your blocks down. I just like to get out of there as fast as I can in case of emergency. Sometimes if you have your slides out and there's a trucker to your side, they may not be able to get out if your slide is out. So if you're able to access all the important things in your RV without pulling out slides, that's a major bonus. Mm -hmm. Now I'm really excited for this section and I wanna talk a little bit about our favorite rest stops. And the reason that this is so cool is that I didn't know that some of these states have these killer rest stops. They do. I think for me, my favorite was Indiana, Indiana because Indiana rest stops have a gas station and where you can buy snacks and stuff like that. Usually it had a fast food joint and it had a ton of space, not just for the RVers, but for the truckers as well. Yeah. New Mexico had a really, really nice pretty. truck stop. Texas yep. had a nice rest stop. Louisiana. I think my favorite was Louisiana. This, yeah. this rest stop was amazing. Yeah. And, and it's funny though, because like Oregon and Washington had really good rest stops. They tended to have uh, uh, dump stations in most of those. Whereas Colorado, sorry, I'm a Colorado native, but uh, they, their rest stop wasn't as impressive as some of the other states. Yes. So you'll definitely get a feel that different states do rest stops differently. Another one of my favorite rest areas was actually in Florida where you can actually see the beach. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was super, super cool. When you are ready to leave the rest stop, you don't know how much room you have to get back out into the highway. And these are very, very dangerous areas. So pay super close attention. Try to get up as much speed as you can on the on-ramp so that you can merge into traffic. Don't stop. Well, no, it's true though. When you're going into a rest stop, you want to go as slow as possible because you don't know where you have to turn and you're too big to make U-turns. Right, and when, when you're, you're leaving, leaving the rest stop, you wanna get as much speed as you can. Stop way back before you get out there. One of the things we noticed is there was rest stops that literally had 100 or 200 feet before you merged into two lanes at 65, 70 miles an hour. Yeah. So be super, super cautious. So given that John sacrificed himself and wore the same clothes for five days in a <laughs> row, if y'all could please like this video and subscribe to our channel because <laughs> that'll make it worthwhile for him. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video, guys.